السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ الحمد للہ آئی بین آئی میڈ ڈیلیور مائی ریسیڈنس بیک ان ٹو تھاؤزینڈ ون اینڈ سنس especially more so in the last five years and what we have seen is this is typical of any society or any community so as the community evolves we start from trying to fulfill our basic needs so when our first our forefathers who who made deliver home when they started their uh, their quest for establishing the identity, identity of the muslim community their first goal was to establish establish a center of worship right a musalla so to say a masjid and obviously when a mosque was established and that's how ISD came into existence back in 1975 and since then as I mentioned we have grown leaps and bounds and so has the the needs of the community so obviously once we have fulfilled our need to establish a place of worship the next uh, uh, hierarchical need for the community was to establish an Islamic school now if you look at the community we have not one school but we have two schools and it's all about the demand and supply equation coming into play so that means that shows that there is a need for having two schools in the community and looking back five years ago we had one islamic center isd still is the largest islamic center for the muslims of delaware for the northern uh, northern part of the state but now between 2001 and 2012 now we have at least five islamic centers right and all the five islamic centers when you go there during the friday prayers during any congregation prayers you will see they are at the brim of their capacity so that shows the community has grown so this is where this fulfills our our basic need of having a place of worship having a islamic school to impart both uh, secular and islamic education for our kids in terms of where we have to go from from here right my vision uh, is basically we have to also step up to the to the challenge of the society just like any other community just like any other society we have our own challenges we have a growing population of uh, senior citizens in, in our community so we had to come up with a project to to address those needs we have issues like uh, domestic abuses domestic violence we have issues like uh, marital counseling so we have to really come up with a project to address the issues of marital counseling and financial counseling for our uh, i mean low income uh, families we also have issues where uh, we have special needs uh, children in the community so we had a, we had to come up with a project where we address that that uh, unfulfilled need of the community so these are all the uh, the key challenges that we have to now start uh, planning for so that way 10 years 15 years down the line we can confidently say that yes we can and we will exist as a society because these are the things that goes beyond fulfilling the basic needs which is having a place of worship having a school uh, for, for the uh, for the children now our community has grown both organically and laterally right like i mentioned like we have so many islamic centers now like at least two islamic schools similarly we also need to expand our outreach towards the mainstream in a two dimensional way one obviously we look up to uh, the mainstream media right how do you interact with the media how do you come up with a program so that our uh, our thought process is, is taken into account when they define who muslims are right so they had to come up to us and so we have to establish that that sort of identity uh, in the media so that's one dimension and the second dimension is how do we bridge the gap between our community our society and people of other uh, other faith because you really want to 20 years 30 years down the line you want to be considered that you are also stepping up to the challenge you are also stepping up to the plate and owning up the uh, Uh, the core concept of citizenship of the nation right so you had to come up and say you know what we have our islamic centers our islamic schools has boy scouts program we have girl scouts program so we have people who can actually come 
and go up to uh, the uh, what do you call it the the emergency uh, medical or or any kind of emer emergency situations that comes up so we need to be able to provide a team of people who can go and work with in tandem with the with the, with the, count, with the county uh, rescue forces so those are the things that we really have to start uh, start planning for and and uh, it's also very interesting that when people uh, tend to look at they come to me and, and ask me what are the key challenges that your society has versus any other society right we have so many minorities here i mean in this country so the one one key differentiating factor that 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 i have found and i'm sure like all the muslim leaders agree to that is in our society we do have this additional element if you will which is a more than 80% of our population of, our, of of the congregation comes from the first generation immigration right immigrants basically so with that what happens is uh, recently we had a case where a, uh, there was a marital uh, issue that was brought to the uh, brought to our attention and we found that it was it, it came to us too late right and then that was a first generation immig Im immigrants and they do not have the the luxury of getting the support of the extended family right so that structure is missing so that's one thing that really uh, complicates our uh, our social uh, social fabric if you will so these are things that we have to really take into account so where do you see uh, the muslim muslim community in in 20 years from now what do you think what would be the makeup of the society of the uh, uh, muslim community in delaware what kind of organizations would would be needed in 20 years uh, how would you envision uh, that scenario yeah uh, basically, I mean, 20 years from now, obviously, we are going to move beyond establishing Islamic centers and Islamic schools. So we need to have, uh, to name a few, we need to have a project that fulfills the, the need for like homeless shelter for, for Muslim women, as an example, right? We need to have old age homes, like homes for senior citizens, or at least some sort of like a community center that addresses to their to their needs, right? So any, I mean, all these social uh, aspects that's faced by any other mainstream society. So we have those issues. So we need to work towards establishing establishing those institutions. So I think this has been a pattern. If you look at any of the societies, any of the communities that has evolved from the inception stage to a maturity stage, right? So as you go through the journey of evolution, you really start with okay, you fulfill your basic needs. Right? It's like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Right, you fulfill your basic needs, and then you go beyond that to 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 really uh, strengthen your social fabric, so that so so that way you become a dynamic and sustainable force in the community. Um, how about uh, educational structure in Delaware? What would you what would you see in twenty years? What kind of uh, educational institutions would we be needing? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, ideally, I think my goal is to really have like an Islamic university here, right? When it's Islamic university, we talk about just like our Islamic schools, where we do impart secular education, right, the mainstream education, as well as we we also impart the second dimension, which is Islamic curriculum, the Islamic aspect of it, right? So that way, our people, when they go out in the uh, when they go out to serve in the public force they really become true ambassadors of, of Islam, not just taking into account the Islamic vision, but also the mainstream vision, so that way they can really uh, become true ambassadors of, of, uh, of humanity, if you will. So I think basically to answer your question, we need to really have like Islamic university, uh, not just these projects, yes, we have to have Islamic centers, Muslim community centers, we would like to have some sort of like a uh, Red Crescent, right, those kind of social organizations, NGOs, non-profit organizations, so going the full uh, nine yards. Okay. Uh, any other issues that you may see in today's uh, Muslim Delaware that uh, uh, that would need to be 
sorted out. Let's say, you know, let me ask you this. What is Muslim Delaware today? What is the composition of Muslim Delaware today? Yeah. Today, uh, the Muslims of Delaware, we are a I think if you look at our, our constituents, we come from all over the world, right? There is no one uh, demography that's just dominant or, e or other. So we have an equal share of, share of the pie, if you will. So we'll find, a, I mean, one third of the population from Southeast Asia, one third from, from the Middle East, and one third from, the, I mean, from here, right? The indigenous Muslims from the, from the U.S. And also, as I mentioned, so we're talking about two-thirds of the population being first-generation immigrants, right? So, so, so that's the I mean, current, uh, current constituency. Now, with that comes its own baggage, right? The reason we have many Islamic centers here is because obviously we do have a need for having the Islamic centers, but then at least one or two Islamic centers, when they, when they got established, it was purely based on uh, the ethnic background, just because their congregation was not comfortable enough to mingle or to associate themselves with with the bigger with other bigger organizations because of the language barrier or cultural bar barrier, if you will. But then, ten years, twenty years from now, we have to keep in mind all these cultural barriers will dissolve. This will become like a melting pot, right? When when we have our kids, when they grow up, all these cultural barriers barriers will be gone. So they would come up as one one identity, which is American Muslims, right? And and I think there are some challenges even now because of the because of the same same uh, same thing that I mentioned that the inception of certain institutes was may may have been based on those uh, uh, those contexts, but I still see a need that we need to bring together some sort of synergy between all these organizations because I firmly believe in the fact that when we are working on a project, we do not have to reinvent the wheel. If we know that there is some other organization or a group from Delaware Muslims who are already doing that, so it just makes sense for us to approach them and, and work with them, work in tandem with, with that particular group. A good example is last year when Islam Society of Delaware, when we did the back to school project, so we had to really, I mean, invent the whole structure of the, uh, of the back to school program. We had to start from scratch. We had to really identify what are the things that we have to do. How do we set up this program? How do we really deliver the, the, the project? Now this year what we did was, we found out there's one more organization in Delaware, which is Zakat Foundation. They have been doing the back to school program for the last four years, and they already had the whole infrastructure set up to do that. So we decided instead of reinventing the wheel, how about we let them run this program and we just support them with whatever resources they need. And it worked out really well. So basically we didn't really have to, we spent probably one-fifth of the resources that we spent last year by just aligning with this particular group because they already had that thing programmed into their, uh, into their activities. So those are the things that we really had to start, start uh, focusing on. So in, as I said, we are in the evolution stage we have gone past the inception or the infancy stage, but we haven't really matured yet. So this is a path to evolution, path to maturity. So I think it, we would get the most out of, uh, out of our resources if we align with other groups, with other organizations who are doing similar things. So that way we can have a whole dashboard of activities to deliver for everyone's benefit. I'm just thinking, <laughs> you're not regarding this, right? You're recording. No, it's recording. It's okay. okay it so, what did you want to phone me? Never 
Okay. Yeah, मैं तो बोलने का अच्छा लाइक फोर फर्स्ट लैंग्वेज सेंटर्स आई थॉट आई थॉट दैट इंक्लूड्स डोस बट बट राइट राइट समटाइम्स मेबी जस्ट जस्ट नेम देम ओके सो फॉर एग्जांपल इन इन द क्वेश्चन दैट आई आस्क व्हाट इज द कंपोजिशन ऑफ मुस्लिम मेलोडी टुडे यू टॉक्ड अबाउट द पीपल कंस्टिट्यूएंट यू कैन आल्सो टॉक अबाउट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन Okay. So, yeah. what is the makeup of muslim yeah. so currently the muslims in delaware are made up of multiple organizations right they belong to multiple islamic centers in delaware like i mentioned islamic society of delaware is the largest group that caters to about 2000 muslim families here in the newark area right uh, 